2023 has been a mixed bag in the world of gaming with some really outstanding titles having been released alongside arguably some of the worst trash we've ever seen. Of course the year isn't actually over yet, but we thought we'd take a look back over the last 8 or so months and talk about a few of the biggest flops that were actually released to the public to uh, not enjoy. So are you ready? I sure hope so. First up we have Hawken Reborn which went into early access on May 17th. Okay, so perhaps you're thinking maybe reviews for the early access are just a little on the harsh side. I certainly won't dismiss the possibility, but uh, despite the fact that this game has only been around for like 3 months now, it's one of the lowest rated games on Steam at the moment. I think it's 16th worst, which still makes it far less hated than the universally reviled Overwatch 2. So why all the hate? Well, with a score of just 24%, which is astoundingly low even for an early access game, it would appear that Hawken Reborn has virtually zero redeeming features. But I think the biggest gripe here is that this latest offering doesn't include what made the original Hawken so great, the PvP. Yep, Hawken Reborn is PvE and, at least at present, has no PvP mode, which just doesn't make any sense to me. There's a reason people play games, and there's a reason why they are fans of certain franchises, and in the case of Hawken, it's the option to go head to head in a mechanized deathmatch against other human players. It's not like you can even go back and play the original Hawken that came out in 2012 since it was shut down and removed from Steam in 2018. That means the only real option right now is Hawken Reborn. But worse than the whole PvE thing is the fact that this reboot of Hawken contains microtransactions and is essentially pay to win. That's just a whole lot of nope right there, so it's little wonder that fans of the original game are a little bit less than impressed. If there are any positives here, I guess it's that the graphics are possible and the gameplay, while certainly nothing to write home about, is entertaining enough. However, if you're a Hawken OG, this will undoubtedly feel like a lazy cash grab that sullies the good name of the original Hawken. I don't think all hope is lost for Hawken Reborn, but if it wants to succeed in any way, the devs had better listen to all the feedback they've received and make some big changes sooner than later. But admittedly, Hawken Reborn is free to play, so even if it sucks, you don't really have to fork out any doubloons for the displeasure. So while it may be one of the biggest flops of 2023 so far, I wouldn't say it's the absolute worst or completely beyond redemption. But yeah, please don't hold your breath. Our next flop is Greyhill Incident which came out on June 9th. I'm gonna level with you guys. I personally didn't have very high hopes for this one, and that's not because of the game's story or the fact that it involves little bug-eyed grey-skinned aliens. Okay, maybe that has something to do with it, but I think what really hurts Greyhill Incident is its unbelievably trash gameplay. Yes, this game requires you to move around quite regularly since you have to carry out various tasks and evade aliens, but you move slower than an octogenarian with a busted Zimmer frame and a gammy leg. In other words, gameplay is nothing short of a slog, so unless you have the patience of a saint, a few minutes in, you'll probably want to punch your monitor or hurl your tower out the window. If you can stomach the highly frustrating traversal, it feels generous to call it that, then you'll be pleased to know that everything else is a mess as well. Greyhill Incident's combat isn't just stale, it's basically non-existent. It's clear you're supposed to use stealth and try to stay hidden, but it's kind of hard to evade aliens if you have the stamina of a morbidly obese man with chronic asthma. You can shoot and kill the greys, but since ammunition isn't exactly abundant, this approach isn't actually viable at all. I guess you're supposed to kill aliens as a last resort cause stealth and sneaking and such, but since you'll often find you have no actual idea of where to go, this makes for a generally confusing and painful experience. On top of all this, the voice acting in Greyhill Incident, if you can even call it that, is disjointed and wooden for the most part and clearly done as an afterthought or something that was hastily pre-recorded for inclusion in the game. Mercifully the environments are pretty spooky and immersive from a graphics perspective, but there's just too much wrong here for it to be worthwhile. And if you want to play Greyhill Incident right now, you'll have to fork out $25 for the pleasure. Seeing that the game will probably take you about 3 hours to complete at most, you're looking at about $8 an hour. That might even be acceptable if the game was well polished and enjoyable, but it really just isn't. I know the government recently said aliens are real, so I kinda now believe they aren't real, but whether they are or aren't, we definitely deserve a good alien abduction horror game. But if you were hoping for Greyhill Incident to be it, uh, yeah think again. If you like walking real slow and run out of breath from climbing three or four steps up to your front porch, this might be the game for you. If you're a sane person who values their well-being and prefers to save money for things like food and rent, or just good games, then please, don't touch this one with a 10-foot barge pole. Next up is none other than Redfall. I'm not sure where to start with this one, but to call it a major letdown would be an understatement. Admittedly fans were already skeptical about Redfall before its official release on May 2nd, but I don't think there was any way any of us could have prepared for the bitter disappointment this open world vampire FPS brought along with it. Redfall has an interesting enough premise, even if its plot is entirely ridiculous, but these aspects are probably its most redeeming features, and that really isn't a good thing at all. You would think that with Arcane's pedigree, Redfall would be amazing, or at the very least mediocre, but it's just dull at best and an utter dumpster fire at worst. Redfall is riddled with bugs, performs worse than a tired old nag, is graphically dull and even ugly at times, and the gameplay is just meh. 
In all truth, there's almost nothing that makes it even remotely good. But I think what really killed anyone who was foolish or unfortunate enough to purchase and play Redfall is the fact that they had to pay $70 for it. That's a premium price placed on a steaming pile of buggy trash that is largely unimaginative and lazy and doesn't even seem remotely ashamed about it. It really does feel like Redfall's development was rushed and very poorly thought through, and it's clear that nowhere near enough testing was done. As one Steam reviewer put it, Redfall is a $30 early access indie game masquerading as a AAA title. There's little in the way of variety when it comes to guns, enemy hitboxes are just broken, and the co-op, which is why many people purchased Redfall in the first place, didn't actually work upon launch. I'm not even sure if the situation has improved in any meaningful way with the introduction of patches. In fact, my assumption is that because recent review scores are even lower than the overall score that they've either made no improvement or possibly made the situation even worse. I could go on and on about Redfall, but it has to be one of the biggest disappointments of the year, and possibly even the last five years. And this game came from the same developers behind legendary titles like Dishonored, Deathloop, and Arx Fatalis. I don't know guys, even more than three months after the fact, this one still boggles my mind. One thing's for sure is that Redfall is the reason why many gamers will never pre-order a game ever again. So now that you're suitably depressed and likely lost all faith in gaming and the human race in general, let me hit you with the ultimate Dragon Ball Z style spirit bomb to reduce any measly shred of hope you have left to cinders. The worst game of 2023 so far, and perhaps of all time, is none other than the Lord of the Rings Gollum. Why God? Why did this happen? Have we really strayed so far from your grace? The Lord of the Rings Gollum is a game absolutely nobody asked for, and also one that pretty much nobody thought would be good. And behold, it was so much worse than we could could have ever imagined. This half assed turd of a game was made with the sensibilities of aspiring crackheads in mind, or at least it would seem that way. If nothing else, it was definitely developed by crackheads. You don't need or even want me to explain, but I'm going to anyway. Uh, where to start? Okay, well, the graphics are utterly bland, the character designs, even golems, are poorly rendered and bordering on comical, the gameplay ranges from straight up boring to WTF, and fall damage is variable? I think that covers most of the bases, but no, I'm not done yet. The enemy AI would make games from the 80s look advanced by comparison, the camera angles often make the game close to unplayable and even completely unplayable, and the level design leaves a lot to be desired. It's actually just way too easy to hate on the Lord of the Rings Gollum, but it absolutely has to be done so that we never foul the earth with something so unbelievably deplorable ever again. What is the Lord of the Rings Gollum trying to say? Who is it for? Why was it even greenlit in the first place? There are just so many questions that we will never have the answers to. If I ever meet God, the only question I will ask him is, why did you allow the Lord of the Rings Gollum to be a thing? It's actually a more important question to ask than the meaning of life. I mean it. I will point out that the Lord of the Rings Gollum did receive a patch on July 27th, approximately two months after its initial release, but while its paltry 14 recent reviews are more positive, the overall score remains dismally low. And to be honest, there are actually so few user reviews for this game because most people had the good sense to avoid it completely. If you did buy the game, I applaud you for your courage to take risks, but I also send you my sincerest condolences. So yeah, I guess 2023 has had some real stinkers, and it's not even the end of August yet. We still have four months to go, people. Surely it can't get any worse. Surely. You know what? I don't want to think about it. But in spite of the fact that the games I just discussed all suck, none are so hated as Overwatch 2. So if any future release somehow manages to receive more vitriol from gamers, I think the world, and perhaps even the universe, will come to an end. That's it for now fam, what are your thoughts on the games we just covered? Are these the worst flops of 2023? Or do you have a game or games that you believe are as bad or maybe even worse? Scared to say this, but please let us know in the comments. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily gaming, VR and tech content. From me and the crew here at Metasquad, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Later!